Praise the Lord. I want to greet all of us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and Savior. John Calvin is my name, and a witness of the saving power in the blood of Jesus Christ. We continue on with our theme for this season, which is our Lord's Prayer. And today we are going to the last bit, which is uh, lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. The last part says, for thine is a kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That is the book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 13. The other text is the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 20, 29, verses 10 to 13. This passage that we, of Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, is about the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer that we have been dealing with this season. This acts with a doxology. A doxology is simply a way of adoring God. When we say, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, is simply uh, ascribing goodness, ascribing glory to God. And this phrase is not in all major manuscripts of the Greek Bible. However, it is in the earlier ones where we draw uh, the King James Version and the New King James. You realize that if you read uh, the NIV, it does not have this ending because it is drawn from a different manuscript. Some have argued that this prayer is the same as the one found in Luke 11, 2 to 4, but this passage, in this passage of Luke, there is no appearance of the doxology. Uh, Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. It is suggested that the scribes had harmonized these two sets, the, the Lucan uh, um, version and the Matthew version. This doxology is very, very close to the reading that I mentioned earlier in the book of First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 10 to 13, which, which, uh, which says, where David praised the Lord in the presence of the assembly, saying this, Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, you as Lord is greatness, power, and glory, and majesty, and splendor. For everything in heaven is yours. You as, O Lord, is a kingdom. You are exalted head over everything. Wealth and honor comes from you. You are the rule, ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt, give strength to all. Now, God, we give you thanks and praise for your glorious name. And this text talks about after David had uh, mobilized the sources for the building of the temple, and God did not want him to build the temple, so he mobilized the sources and gave them to his son Solomon. And here, he is simply worshiping God because of who he is. And he says a number of things, that praise belongs to God. When we talk about sovereignty of God, he is the one we, we give praise. And he raises an issue of uh, God being from everlasting to everlasting. He does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is great in power. Our God is great even in splendor. And this morning as we celebrate him uh, in the Lord's Prayer, we actually declare that wealth and honor belongs to the Lord. And that every day and every time we have a reason as a church, as a community, to give him thanks. So what is this sovereignty of God we are talking about? Sovereignty of God is a Christian teaching that God is, is the one with the supreme authority. Above all things, and everything is under his control. God is able, God is the one who is a sovereign. Indeed, he is the creator and the possessor of the whole heaven and whole earth. Sovereignty is an attribute of God based on the premise that God is the one who creates everything. And he has absolute right and full authority to do what, whatever he desires to do. In, in the teachings that we learn during our catechism from the Westminster Confession of Faith, it says that God is from eternity. And by, uh, by the most wise, he's the most wise, holy counsel according to his will, freely and unchangeable, ordained at whatever comes to pass. So therefore, when we talk about the sovereignty of God, we are saying God is the one who decides what he wants to do with no one who can question him. So as we end this uh, season of the Lord's Prayer, what we are indeed saying is that the Lord God Almighty is the one in charge. He's the one in charge of this world. He's the one who created the world. He's the one who sustains the world. He's the one who declares the end from the beginning. So my prayer this morning as we celebrate him through this Lord's Prayer, saying that thine be the glory and honor and power. 
Because when we pray this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, we say, For thine is a kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Meaning that God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So my prayer and my question this morning, since our God is sovereign, member of this congregation, how should we respond to his sovereignty? Number one, it's important to know that God does what he wants in this life. We can never, we can have a pray for his mercy. We are now in a season of the challenge of uh, uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus. And sometimes you may wonder, has, why has God allowed this to happen to, in, the, in the whole world? Why has God let our people suffer and struggle? God is indeed in charge. However, we have a responsibility to call upon his name. We have a responsibility to call upon him when we are in trouble. Indeed, we have a responsibility to call him because he always hears. Indeed, there's a song that we sing. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Amen. So we have a responsibility as Christians, as, church, as a church community, to call upon him so that he will have mercy upon us even when there is a challenge. Number two, in response to his sovereignty, we have a responsibility to seek his will in our lives. Earlier, we studied about thy will be done. And we said that God would want to align us to his will. When we say, may thy will be done in on earth as it is in heaven, what that prayer means in the Lord's Prayer is that God desires that we are aligned to his will. And his will is not, is, is not easy. Because our mind and his mind are far, as far as heaven is far from the earth. So we have, we have a responsibility to align ourselves to his will. God does not reveal to us everything. Because if God was to reveal to us his will and everything, he ceases to be God. He only reveals the matters that he wants us to know. So therefore, as we surrender ourselves to him, we have a responsibility again to seek that his will be done in our lives. Even in this, in this season of this challenge, my prayer for all of us and for this country and for the world is that we may connect ourselves to his will. Number two, that we may be in tune to his Holy Spirit. In the Lord's Prayer, this prayer that we pray, it's also a way of surrendering ourselves to God and saying, we do not know how to pray. The Spirit of God intercedes for us with groanings that are not, are not utterable. So what does that mean? As we connect ourselves to his Spirit, then the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Praise the name of the Lord. That's number one. Number two, number three. Number three, for us to know what God we, that God wishes well for us as this world, as, the, as individuals, even as a country, and as a church. Why am I saying this? Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Can we see the goodness of God? Can we see his, his, his wish for us to be well? God is not a sadist who is clapping the other side when he sees us suffering. However, he wishes well for us. He wishes well even when there are challenges. He wishes well when people are going through challenges and going through problems. Number four, he is willing to deliver us from evil. And this is what we learned last week. When we pray, deliver us from evil. My prayer is for us to know that God is quick in acting. He does not punish us as our sins deserve. I know at times when we go through, uh, through trouble, when we go through, through pain, we always wonder, have I sinned against God? What have I done? What have I done? But let me say, say this morning, that indeed, God does not punish us according to our own sins. If he was, none of us would be alive. Amen? Again, this is not a license for us to continue sinning. The fact that God is calling us to repentance, to looking at our lives, to repentance, and asking God to cleanse us, means that we are also running away from that which would, would connect us to his wrath. Then number five, and the last one, is to know that his grace is sufficient, even in trouble. Are our members struggling? Is this country struggling financially because of the coronavirus? Are we going through challenges of staying at home in this quarantine? All these challenges that we are going through, the grace of God is sufficient. And his grace, we sing, will take us through. And his grace is indeed that which comes to uphold us even when there are challenges. Indeed, his grace gives us hope. 
that even though we are in trouble, even though we are in hardships, that one time this will come to an end. And let me say this to, to, to this congregation, that this cha challenge is not forever. It's only for a season. So God is indeed calling us not to lose hope, to be strong in him. He is sovereign, yes. He is in charge of everything. But as his children, we are also his friends. We can seek him. Number two, suffering indeed may come and many of us could be suffering but god will ultimately act he and, and he has already done it the fact that we are not all consumed is a reason enough to say god has already in, uh, intervened and then finally he is abounding in love many a times theologians will struggle with this how is god sovereign yet all loving how is god merciful yet people go through challenges let me say this God is indeed able to balance himself. He's not a human being who struggles with balance. He is able to be all sufficient, all seeing, yet all loving and all merciful. So he's abounding in love. So those of us who are downcast, those of us who are giving up, those of us who are feeling like God has let us down, let me tell you this, this morning that our God is abounding in love. So therefore may his grace be upon us. May his grace visit us. At this season when we are struggling as individuals, as families, business are closing, business are at heart, we have a God in heaven who is abounding in love. He will not let us be destroyed. Indeed, I want to say this, that his desire is that this season may end soon. Amen. And my prayer as your pastor and friend is that God may keep us strong even through this process. So my prayer today, as we pray, as we end this series of the Lord's Prayer, what we are saying is for thine is the kingdom, O God. The power and the glory is yours forever. So therefore we have a God whose kingdom is here. We have a God who has all power. We have a God whose glory is forever and ever. We are dealing with a God who is eternal, who does not leave us to be lost. And let me tell you uh, this day, at times you may be thinking through your mind, you may not necessarily tell anyone, but within your mind saying, has God let us down? I want to assure you that our God is an ever-present help, even in a time of need. Psalms 46 and verses 1. So what we need now is to be still, to be still and know that he is God. Can we put our faith in him and say, although we are going through trouble, he is in charge. He is indeed there. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's pray that God Almighty may walk with us through this journey. Shall we pray? Dear God, our loving Father, we thank you so much because of this season that we are learning about the Lord's Prayer. And as we come to the culmination of this prayer with the doxology, we say that thine is a kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. We know that God, you are preeminent. You are the one that lives and reigns forever and ever. And you want to wait on you. The situation that we are going through in this world and this country is not known to you. You, are indeed, you indeed know it. So therefore, God, we pray that you may come, come down and visit with us. Come and deliver us, O Lord. Come and visit with this country. Come and visit with individuals that we, we are going to have victory in you. May your name be honored, O Lord. May your name be glorified. Come and deliver us from this evil because yours is a kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Amen.